Um, <laughs> um, as you know, it's been a very tough uh, time for a lot of us. Uh, it's been a very tough two weeks leading to this time. And um, it has exceptionally been very tough for me because um, coming out from, you know, the trauma that we all went through um, and after the broadcast, you know, I felt some sense of, you know, the broadcast I'm talking about, the broadcast with, uh, with, with the president, I felt some kind of uh, dissolution just like everybody else. It felt like suddenly, you know, everybody was very tired and rightfully so. And I felt some sense of urgency to quickly call us back because um, a lot of the tweets that were coming in were about people saying they wanted to leave the country. And you know how we are. We started to make jokes about these things. I started to get really worried that, you know, um, a lot of people would just uh, make jokes out of this and all our energy would go down. So I felt the urgency to quickly remind us why we are doing what we're doing and to um, let us know that we are actually winning and that we needed to stop the I'm um, leaving talks and just get back online quickly and apply more pressure. Um, if you followed my tweets that day, which I did I think about five or so, you would notice this quick succession of those tweets and what I was trying to um, say and what I was trying to quickly, what I was trying to quickly um, tell people. Unfortunately, one of those tweets um, the one we, which had the if there are, you know, um, uh, people who da 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 that, you know, people need to come up quickly and, and, and talk about it, you know, um, robbed pe some people off the wrong way. After all said and done, I realize that a good portion of people actually understood what I was trying to say. Um, a, a lot of people actually understood what I was trying to say. A lot of people reached out later and said they understood what I was saying. And so I was very confused as to why people thought that I would mean any harm. If you have been following me, you would know where I stand. I have never hidden my voice. I have never hidden my intention. I have gone through a lot of persecution. I just don't come online to talk about them. I have been an activist for 15 years. Um, before it even became something that, you know, is all over the social media and stuff like that. I've been fighting. And I have been attacked many times. Some of you have seen this attack. Some of you have had to, you know, support me or, you know, help me out and stuff like that. And there are some attacks that I've never even come online to talk about. There are some that are even quite serious, international, um, you know. <laughs> there are many things we don't talk about. Um, so you can understand how very hurt I was because there's nothing as painful as if you dedicate your life to something or a group of us, uh, ourselves, that you now feel that you are thrown to the wolves and you feel like the people who have always been trying to get you now have an opportunity to laugh at you. It's a very eerie feeling. It's a very painful and very alone, alone um, feeling. I realize now that there were a lot of, uh, a lot of, there were a lot of uh, hands behind the scenes. And you know when you are someone that people have been trying, the opposition or the people that you fight against have been trying to get for a very long time. You know, usually they would come at me with their own, um, with their own normal, um, um, pages and stuff like that, and so everybody knew who they were, and people would attack them back and stuff like that. But obviously we are in different times, and the whole system and the whole, uh, <laughs> the whole uh, thing has changed. Um, I guess the easiest thing to do right now was to go from behind and act like they're my fans as well, and you know, attack me from, from that from that uh, standpoint. So that way it makes it look more organic. It makes it look like, oh, it's her fans that are attacking her so that everybody can join on knowing fully well the, 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 the times. 
I'm not saying that what I wrote was perfect. It could have been worded differently. But if you notice, when I kept talking, the reason why I said that was because we had some information that they were going to come out and deny um, that there were any bodies. And my point, which I got to at the end of that tweet, was to say that whether there were bodies or not, whether you accept that you killed anybody or not, the fact that you went there to shoot at protesters, not just any kind of protesters, our power was the fact that we were, uh, what do we call it again? We were um, peaceful, yes, that was it. The fact that we were peaceful, you know, and that is a big thing internationally. The fact that nobody there was throwing stones at anybody, the fact that nobody there was rioting, the fact that nobody was even fighting back, the fact that everybody was peaceful is a big deal. Under the UN Convention on Laws, of which Nigeria is a, a temporary member of, Nigeria is a temporary member of the Security Council of the UN. And so, coming from that, it's a big crime. It is a crime already. And that's what I was trying to, to quickly say, that look, they can't, so when I talked about, uh, what was that word I used, when I talked about sensationalism, I wasn't talking about us. I wasn't talking about sensationalism from us. I was talking about them. Because if you notice, there was a lot of talk, right? There was a lot of propaganda and a lot of, uh, uh, this did not happen, that did not happen, and, you know, and all of that, it was very confusing. And I was trying to say, they can't, let them not slow us down. Because whether that or not, the most important thing is you went there and they already accepted. Remember that they already accepted that, yes, they, um, the military went there to go shoot. So they can't deny that. And already accepting that is a crime, a major crime. And so I was trying to quickly bring everybody back to that. So having said that, my people, this is what I had in mind. And this is what I tried to bring up. And if you go back to all the tweets that I have been tweeting before that time, you will see that this is where I have been. Now let me go and um, correct the notion, because I saw a lot of people saying, Omotola was paid, Omotola has compromised, Omo Omotola. I, I'm an orphan. I lost my father when I was 12 years old. By God's grace alone, I worked very hard to become where I am today. If you know my story, you will know that I am not somebody that compromises. I am not somebody you can lure. I am too stubborn. I'm a rebel. I am not somebody you can lure with money. I do not respect money. I do not live for money. I live for purpose. And I have never in my life been bribed by government, even in places where I could have collected and chopped mouth. <laughs> I have never collected government's dime, one dime. So what exactly will I be needing that compromise for at this point in my life? Is it that at this point now God has not blessed me from nothing? What will I want to be compromised for? By who? Where? Who is that person that can, that can bribe me? Please, please, please. It's very painful to hear those things. It's very painful. I've challenged, I've challenged them many times. I've challenged them. I've said if there's anybody out there who is a government official who has ever given me anything, she come out and say it. You knew the other time when we had a fight on Twitter where one of them came out and whatever. They said something about Jonathan, da, da, da. And I said, if, they, if you have ever given me anything, come out and bring out the proof. Did you, did you see anybody come out with anything? So if I didn't then, why do you think I will now? You know, the strategies, I elaborate. The strategies to discredit everybody's voice. If you are very attentive and you are very, <laughs> they're very observant, you realize that it's not today that this strategy started. It's the strategies evolving. It's becoming more and more dangerous. I realized eventually now, after I took time out to, because sometimes when you're in a war front, and you feel like <laughs> the war is hot, it's only wisdom for you to retract and go and um, understand what's going on. And so I realized eventually that the strategy has changed and it is very elaborate. I beg you, I beg you please people,
for the people that have been very consistent, we need your support, we need your help. Sometimes it feels alone doing this. It feels very dangerous and it feels very, you feel, you feel, sometimes you ask yourself, why am I doing this? So please and please, Omotola is not after anybody's money. I can never be compromised. Everything I do, I do for myself, for my children, for my children's children, for this country to get better. Because who does not want to live in a sane society? If you go and check my antecedents, I am I'm not a... I didn't just start today. I mean, I posted this on my Instagram the other time, where I said, I think I posted, was the picture? I posted yeah, a picture side by side, yes, of me working with um, Enough is Enough 10 years ago. The picture is still there. 10 years ago. That was 2010. 2010. I mean, it's not the first time I've done that, but that was just, you know, one of the... Because they posted it, and so I had it to post. So, police brutality did not start today, and we've not been fighting it in just 2020. We started fighting it as far back as 2010. Imagine what we have been through. Imagine the attacks... And we are still fighting it today. We are still fighting it today. But more than ever, we are closer to solutions. More than ever, there is hope. More than ever, we are getting to a point where we can finally see some light. It has taken a lot of energy, a lot of people, a lot of fight, a lot of you know, tenacity to get to where we are. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who is adding their voice, who is not letting out, who is pushing. God bless you. Don't stop. We are closer. A lot of us are working in the background. A lot of my colleagues, or a lot of, you know, I mean, in the, in the, in the NGO world and everything, working, we don't, they don't always come online to see all the things that are going on. But we are close. We are close, and a lot of things are happening. And I still want to end, because I'm not going to say, I'm not going to stay on this life for very long. I want to say that. I want to talk to the government. Is it possible for you to govern the people that don't want to be governed? Is it possible for you to lead people who have decided they don't have any trust or any kind of confidence in you? Is it possible? Do you not realize that the game is up? If you have gotten away with this for many years, you can't get away with it anymore. It is time to start coming clean. It is time to start coming clean before it gets too bad. I am begging you. Now we have a panel. Please let it be true. Let us find the right answers. And if you cannot, you know you cannot find the right answers, get out of the way. Get out of the way. To tell the truth, it is not going to be easy. I wrote a long time ago that it's not, a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. But I believe that a lot of us are not tired. And I know that we are going to get what we need to get. Because we are ready. Um, If you have a question, thank you, thank you. If you have a question for me, if you, if you realize that sometimes there's so too many things in my head. But, you know, I understand the times we're in. And it's a very, it's a very hard time for all of us. It's a very hard time for all of us. So, um, I'll take your questions and I'll answer as many people as I can. God help us. Okay, what is this? This is. 
Say what? So it says initially that you are misunderstood. I hope you're doing fine. Yes, I'm doing fine, thank you. I'm doing well. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was totally misunderstood, but I'm glad that after the whole thing has died down, a lot of people have reached out and said, you know, after the whole initial um, controversy that they've gone back to read my tweets and that now they understand what I was trying to say. But I hold on to what I've always said, and which is we need answers. Um, we need to know who ordered that shooting. Who ordered the shooting? Who removed the cameras? Who turned off the light? You can't, you can't wish it away. Do you want to answer this? Do you want to answer this question? Do you think there is hope for the ongoing investigation? Hmm. I'm, I'm a very optimistic person, and I believe that by God's grace there will be some kind of report. The question was if I have um, hope for the ongoing investigation. I mean, there are credible people there that are representing us. There are strong voices. And so I believe that they, you know, things are going to come at them. <laughs> things are going to come at them. But I know they are strong people, and they'll be able to withstand. Do I feel like this will uh, uh, bring out the kind of results that we want? I hope so. I really hope so. But I feel that the, the climate is different, and I feel we are at a time when nobody is going to let go. So if their plan is to sweep things under the car, because they've done this kind of panels before. At least I've been called to one. Uh, I think it was 2017. So if the plan is to use this one to delay people and just, you know, da, 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 da. I mean, I'm sure by now they know this time around it won't work. Yes, I'm here. If all voices are one as yours, we'll, we will get there soon. Thank you. I hope so. Amen. Sorry? Can you read them to me, please? The feminist coalition, how do we ensure they don't stop supporting this cause of police brutality? So I don't know the people at the feminist coalition. I don't know them personally, but I have friends who are um, common friends with them. Because you know, most of us are all in the same circle, the um, NGO circle and all of that. And I know they're very unruly. I'm sure they won't stop. I mean, because what oh, you guys don't understand is I know that people have failed us. I, and I understand. I know. I know. I understand it. People have failed us. People that we've trusted have turned and gone into government. And then you're like, ah, this person was a voice, you know, and everything. And then they now use it for their own selfish. And you know now they go for office and positions and all of that stuff. All I beg you is don't distrust everyone. Because then what else do we have? If you distrust, if you if you distrust everyone, then what do we have? So I mean, let's try. Let's try until somebody proves beyond us that they are thieves or that they this for their own interest. Let's, let's give them some support and let's see how. Because sometimes it's discouraging when you're doing. That this is a, is a very dangerous thing that we do. And this, we have families. We have families. People are talking into your ear. You have families calling you, telling you what is wrong with you. It's a lot. And so when you feel like you're and sometimes you feel like They throw you on the house. It just feels really like you know, when, <laughs> it's really hard. It's like I said earlier when I did my opening speech, Nigeria is part of a temporary member, by the way. Nigeria is a temporary member of the UN. Um, uh, what do you call them now? Sorry? Peacemaker. Yeah, yeah, the, you know, they're peacemakers. You know, I mean, Nigeria in 2000, was it 2013? Yes. Sent the highest, the fifth highest um, um, troops, you know, for, for UN missions, of which I even went, I was on one of the missions to go see our troops in Liberia. I'm, I'm sure some of you can pull up those pictures, you know, of me taking pictures with them in Liberia and all of that. And this is how strong Nigeria has been. So Nigeria is a temporary member of the Security Council. So it's a so, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a 
ground. And trust me, they can't get away with this. And that's, they know the repercussion, and that's why, the, the, you know, they're trying so hard to change some of the narrative. But thank God we're not letting go. And you can't change it because it's there. And there are proof. There is proof. So yes, the international community is doing a lot. I don't know. I'm not private to everything, so I can't say so much. I can only say to what extent you know, I, I know. And I know that it's going on. And do to achieve our ultimate ultimate goal yeah. of this protest. I, I like what um, Mr. Mr. Douglas said, which is um, planning towards 2023. Because the truth of the matter is, in those days when there's a problem like this, you know, the military will come in or there'll be a coup or something like that. Now the world is frowning at that, so there can't be a coup. You cannot take out a legitimate gov government that was voted in, you know, and all of that stuff. Um, except the protest continues and then, you know, they, they're asked to step, step down or something. So the only way would be, I think, I am not very sure, is to continue to make our, our voices heard, to make our, our voices loud, um, and begin to plan towards the next election. But a lot of people are scared to come out because people are like, if I come out, they don't trust me. So we have to find a balance between you know, like, support people who are willing to come out. Guide them, but support them. I think that's a much better way to be honest. Take the pressure and start with the organization. Um, and I think that's a much better way to be honest. Engage people in the community for that question so that they know we are for them and not, for them against, and not them. against them. Hmm. Do you have, you have a suggestion? What are you going to say? You're going to say something? Yeah. Oh, okay. To be honest, I think we have to start now. And I think, I think this generation is doing a good job at that. Um, I saw something before, because I, people, I went off Twitter, I went off social media for like a week. I just needed to be with myself and I was under a lot of, um, you know, sometimes you just need to take, take, go, you know, step back, you know. So I have not seen a lot that's happening. So please forgive me if I'm not current. I don't know a lot that is happening right now. But I know before I went off, I saw that there were some um, calls for, um, um, for bodies to now start to go to the grassroots. That at the end of the day, what is the point of all of this we're doing if people in the grassroots don't really understand um, politics, right? Yeah. Don't really understand. So I know that also. As celebrities, we have a lot of work to do. Um, I think we're just going to have, we're just going to start doing, we need to start doing a lot of PSAs, and we need to go to the market, we need to go to the market, start to talk to them and engage them. Yeah, one minute. One minute. So I think we, we, just, we, need, we need to go and start engaging people, and engage people wherever you are. Don't think that, okay, my um, house, oh, I'll give an example, in my own house, for example, the um, security people in my, in my neighborhood, we engage them. We engage them. And a lot of them are, you'll be very surprised that a lot of people are actually activists. They are real activists in their hearts. But sometimes they feel like people don't care what they have to say. So I think just engage everybody that you can engage. Engage everybody around you. It starts with that as well. I think this is the most important question. And yes, the most important question, and this is how I am still going to end this, is who ordered the shooting? Who ordered the shooting, to be honest? I believe that we might need even the international community to come in because I really doubt if I order the shooting if I will hang myself. I don't want to say more than that if you know what I mean. So we need to know who ordered the shooting of peaceful protesters at the Lekki Toolgate. There is no escaping it. There is no escaping it. And the earlier we can answer this question and move on, the better. God bless us. God bless Nigeria.